Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we start by reading Psalm 1. How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked, or stand in the pathway with sinners, or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. After the disastrous reigns of King Manasseh and King Ammon of Judah came the reign of King Josiah, where Josiah now returns to the Lord and leads the people of, his, people of the kingdom of Judah back to the Lord. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. He did what was right in the Lord's sight and walked in the ways of his ancestor David. He did not turn aside to the right or the left. In the eighth year of his reign, while he was still a youth, Josiah began to seek the God of his ancestor, David. And in the twelfth year, he began to cleanse Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the Asherah poles, the carved images, and the cast images. Then in his presence, the altars of the Baals were torn down, and he chopped down the shrines that were above them. He shattered the Asherah poles, the carved images, and the cast images, crushed them to dust, and scattered them over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars. So he cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. He did the same in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, and as far as Naphtali and on their surrounding mountain shrines. He tore down the altars, and he smashed the Asherah poles and the carved images to powder. He chopped down all the shrines throughout the land of Israel and returned to Jerusalem. In the 18th year of his reign, in order to cleanse the land and the temple, Josiah sent Shaphan, son of Azaliah, along with Maasiah, the governor of the city, and the court historian Joah, son of Joahaz, to repair the temple of the Lord, his God. So they went to the high priest Hilkiah and gave him the silver brought into God's temple. The Levites and the doorkeepers had collected it from Manasseh, Ephraim, and from the entire remnant of Israel, and from all Judah, Benjamin, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They gave it to those doing the work, those who oversaw the Lord's temple. They gave it to the workmen who were working in the Lord's temple to repair and restore the temple. They gave it to the carpenters and builders and also used it to buy quarried stone and timbers for joining and making beams for the buildings that Judah's kings had destroyed. The men were doing the work with integrity. Their overseers were Jahath and Obadiah, Levites from the Merarites and Zechariah and Meshullam from the Kohathites as supervisors. The Levites were all skilled with musical instruments. They were also over the porters and were supervising all those doing the work task by task. Some of the Levites were secretaries, officers, and gatekeepers. When they brought out the silver that had been deposited in the Lord's temple, the priest Hilkiah found the book of the law of the Lord written by the hand of Moses. Consequently, Hilkiah told the court secretary, Shaphan, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple, and he gave the book to Shaphan. Shaphan took the book to the king and also reported, your servants are doing all that was placed in their hands. They have emptied out the silver that was found in the Lord's temple and have given it to the overseers and to those doing the work. Then the court secretary, Shaphan, told the king, the priest Hilkiah gave me a book and Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. Then he commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam son of Shaphan, Abdon son of Micah, 
the court secretary Shaphan, and the king's servant Asaiah, go and inquire of the Lord for me, and for those remaining in, Jer in Israel and Judah, concerning the words of the book that was found. For great is the Lord's wrath that is poured out on us, because our ancestors have not kept the word of the Lord in order to do everything written in this book. So Hilkiah and those the king had designated went to the prophetess Huldah, the wife of Shalom, son of Tokath, son of Hasra, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the second district. They spoke with her about this. She said to them, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. Say to the man who sent you to me, this is what the Lord says. I am about to bring disaster on this place and on its inhabitants, fulfilling all the curses written in the book that they read in the presence of the king of Judah. Because they have abandoned me and burned incense to other gods, so as to anger me with all the works of their hands. My wrath will be poured out on this place, and it will not be quenched. Say this to the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. As for the words that you heard, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants, and because you humbled yourself before me, and you tore your clothes and wept before me, I myself have heard. This is the Lord's declaration. I will indeed gather you to your ancestors, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster that I am bringing on this place and on its inhabitants. Then they reported to the king. So the king sent messengers and gathered all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the Lord's temple with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, as well as the priests and the Levites, all the people from the oldest to the youngest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the Lord's temple. Then the king stood at his post and made a covenant in the Lord's presence to follow the Lord and to keep his commands, his decrees, and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul in order to carry out the words of the covenant written in this book. He had all those present in Jerusalem and Benjamin agreed to it. So all the inhabitants of Jerusalem carried out the covenant of God, the God of their ancestors. So Josiah removed everything that was detestable from all the lands belonging to the Israelites, and he required all who were present in Israel to serve the Lord their God. Throughout his reign, they did not turn aside from following the Lord, the God of their ancestors. The Christians in Colossae were troubled by false teachers who were proclaiming a particular heresy we don't know all of the details of what this heresy ent entailed. Um, it is simply called the Colossian heresy, but it does seem to have something to do with who Jesus was and how we are to live our lives as Christians. Today, Paul deals with that heresy as he encourages the Christians in Colossae to remain faithful to the word of God as he had preached it to them. Be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit based on human tradition, based on the elements of the world, rather than Christ. For the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily in Christ, and you have been filled by him, who is the head over every ruler and authority. You were also circumcised in him with a circumcision not done with hands, by putting off the body of flesh, in the circumcision of Christ, when you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive with him and forgave us all our trespasses. He erased the certificate of debt with its obligations that was against us and opposed to us, and has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them in him. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you in regard to food and drink, or in the matter of a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of what was to come. The substance is Christ. Let no one condemn you by delighting in ascetic practices and the worship of angels, claiming access to a visionary realm. 
Such people are inflated by empty notions of their unspiritual mind. He doesn't hold on to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and tendons, grows with growth from God. If you died with Christ to the elements of this world, why do you live as if you still belonged to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. All these regulations refer to what is destined to perish by being used up. They are human commands and doctrines. Although these have a reputation for wisdom by promoting self-made religion, false humu humility, and severe treatment of the body, they are not of any value in curbing self-indulgence. Our writing for today comes from the solid declaration of the formula of Concord. This is what we hold and teach in conformity with the ancient Orthodox Church, as it has explained this teaching from the scriptures. The human nature in Christ has received this majesty through the personal union. This happened because the entire fullness of the divinity dwells in Christ, not as in other holy men or angels, but bodily, as in its own body. The divinity shines forth with all its majesty, power, glory, and effectiveness in the received human nature. It does this voluntarily when, as, when and as Christ wills. In, with, and through the human nature, Christ shows, uses, and acts on his divine power, glory, and efficacy, as the soul does in the body, and fire glowing in iron. By means of these illustrations, as was also mentioned above, the entire ancient church has explained this doctrine. This power was concealed and withheld at the time of the humiliation. But now, after the form of a servant has been laid aside, it is fully, powerfully, and publicly exercised before all saints in heaven and on earth. In the life to come, we shall also behold his glory face to face. There is and remains in Christ only one divine omnipotence, power, majesty, and glory, which is peculiar to the divine nature alone. But it shines, manifests, and exercises itself fully, yet voluntarily, in, with, and through the received, exalted human nature in Christ. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, All Who Believe and Are Baptized. All who believe and are baptized shall see the Lord's salvation. Baptized into the death of Christ, they are a new creation. Through Christ's redemption, they shall stand among the glorious heavenly band of every tribe and nation. And we pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.